Hi all. Um, so today we're going to be speaking about another pertinent topic, um, and that is depression amongst caregivers. Um, you know, I realize that most often the responsibility of looking after a family member who's been diagnosed with dementia, um, this, this responsibility falls on a family member, um, such as a, a loved one, a spouse, a, um, a child or a sibling. And most people say, you know, it's, it's a lovingly, loving duty that they undertake and they willingly undertake this duty. But at the same time, we really can't ignore both the physical as well as the emotional toll that such caregiving duties can have on the family member. So today I'll be speaking about some of the self-care types of techniques that have my clients have found useful. Um, and we'll also look at some of the signs and symptoms of depression and we to reach out for help or what type of help um, is available out there. I hope that you find this, um, this talk useful. Please reach out and let me know in the comments if there's any further information that would be useful for, for future videos. So let's first have a look at um, self-care. Uh, self-care is, you know, as we know, it's, it's vital in managing uh, or maintaining mental health. And self-care can take several forms. So I'm just gonna go through a few tips or techniques um, that some of my clients have found useful. Um, the first one I think is, that's so important is taking a break from caregiving. Uh, respite care. So respite care can take the form of uh, family members, friends, or a daycare program, which gives a caregiver um, or gives you as a caregiver some time out just to recharge, to rejuvenate. So you, you, know, you could ask somebody to come and sit in just for an hour a week um, or however often uh, you're able to get respite care um, so that you too can take the break, uh, the mental break from caregiving because it really is emotionally exhausting to be dealing with it on a 24 by seven basis. But I realized that um, you know, it's not always possible, like so extended periods of respite care is not always possible. So even if it's, um, you know, it's just simple activities that you can do at home, while your loved one with, uh, who's been diagnosed with dementia is present, and perhaps they, they're taking a nap, um, take, that, take that longer bath, or read that book that you've been reading, meaning to read, that novel that can take your mind off of caregiving responsibilities. Getting involved in, in gardening or other activities, such as baking or whatever it is that you enjoy doing, painting or whatever the case may be, but take that break away from just thinking about caregiving or taking uh, from uh, that caregiving role um, and really, uh, you know, have a distance between your, yourself and that role in that time where you take a break. Um, it's so important and it goes such a long way in providing the mental rejuvenation that you, you know, you so, so much need, that all caregivers need. So the first, you know, point that I, I think is so important is taking a break from caregiving. And then um, come, uh, coupled with that is, is establishing a social support system. So uh, what I've noticed is that caregivers often have very limited time and opportunities to socialize and this leaves them feeling isolated, this leaves them feeling very depleted as well. So it's important to build up some sort of social support structure around you. And we know that social support st structures buffer people against stresses, right? Um, both, and I think, you know, social support structures plays a dual role. So it can help you to distract away from just the caregiving role. So you realize that there's a whole other component to life outside of the caregiving role. And for that moment, you can allow yourself to be distracted. But it also forms um, a space in which you can perhaps offload, speak about some of your worries, your fears, your frustrations in a supportive space. And um, this can go a long way in, you know, in helping you to combat the feelings of loneliness and um, the isolation um, that you may be feeling. So I recognize that uh, social support is not always available. Um, uh, you know, many of my clients tell me that friends and family members are nowhere to be found once the diagnosis of dementia is, is made. And this is quite sad. But it's not so then impossible for you as a, as a caregiver to get the necessary support that you need, because there are also um, su uh, support groups there, and a lot of them have gone online due to COVID. So you could then perhaps think about joining an online support group, 
where there's others who experience something similar and you may feel that there's a sense of community that you experience in these support groups. So the first one was taking a break from caregiving, um, engaging in other activities, and the second one was establishing that um, sense of social support, which I think is so important. Then, uh, you know, in um, dealing with any sort of emotions, it's important to be able to express one's emotions. So we can do that via talking, like we said, to, to a social support structure. But in the absence of that, you know, there's other ways in which we can also express our feelings. And one such way is journaling. So journaling has been found to be very cathartic. It gives um, people an opportunity to be able to speak or vent freely, I should say, without the fear of judgment. And nobody's going to read that journal thereafter. Um, studies have found that the process of journaling allows um, one to manage anxiety, to reduce depression, and to just improve general well-being. So if there's a feeling of isolation, there's a feeling that you know I can't really reach out and speak about uh, what I'm feeling, um, we need to find other means in which to express this emotion. So you can think about emotion as um, filling a water bottle with water and eventually this water bottle is going to get to the top and it's going to overflow. So before it overflows, we need to find means at which we empty this water bottle. And one way of doing that is through writing. So journaling could take the form of just writing about what your day was like, um, what your fears, what your worries, what your wishes are. Um, you know, it can be creative. Um, you can really go to town with, with writing or with journaling um, in any way that's useful for you. Then another form of self-care would be to engage in any sort of creative pursuits. So research has shown that um, engaging in pro creative processes such as writing lyrics or writing poetry or sketching, painting, um, all of those have such healing potentials. So the creative, um, the creative art um, you know, it, it really requires us to hone in our full attention on a particular task at that moment in time. And when, once our attention is so focused on a particular task, it's difficult for us then to be worrying about something else. So you're engaging all of your time, all of your attention in that moment to this, to this one task. And in doing so, you allow yourself to free yourself from those worries and from those thoughts that you're having relating to the caregiving role. So that's another form of self-care that you could do in your home environment. Then it's also important to engage in other sort of meaningful activities. What I find with some of my clients who've been diagnosed with depression is that the depressive symptoms became more pronounced as they disengaged from meaningful activities in their lives. So, you know, they, they disengage from people and from things that they used to enjoy engaging with before. This made the, the symptoms much worse. So when we speak about um, enjoyable activities, it could be anything that you can do in, even in the house, such as knitting uh, or scrapbooking or exercising, or even maybe taking an online course. Um, the mind is then redirected to a productive and a rewarding task where there's a sense of accomplishment, there's a sense of achievement, or even just a sense of contentment. And when this happens, it becomes more difficult to focus on negative emotions. So depression can have a biological or genetic component. And when it does have a biological or genetic component, you know, then medication is recommended um, to manage this chemical imbalance. But many caregivers also present with depressive symptoms due to situational influences. So this, you know, it could be because of the real sense of exhaustion that they're experiencing and feelings of loss as well, which is so prominent with the diagnosis of uh, dementia. So in the case of um, situational factors, caregivers can also benefit from seeking support of individual counseling with a trained professional, a trained mental health profession, professional, or as I mentioned earlier, the support groups. I hope that you've um, you know, uh, realized that there, that there are means and places in which support is available should you be displaying any signs of depression. Um, I really do hope that you found this, this video to be useful and um, yeah, I will be posting other uh, related videos relating to dementia and the caregiving role. I uh, wish you well on your caregiving duties. Thank you.